This video shows how the training system uses a feature called scenarios to evaluate the competency of trainees. A scenario is like a structured test. Each scenario has a defined set of starting conditions based on a particular plant snapshot. The scenario also has goals that the operator must accomplish. For this demonstration, we will use the digester area. We are going to create a simple scenario where the operator must feed chips from the chip pile here to the chip bin here. We start by configuring a new scenario. This is done from the Scenario Management screen. First, we click Create Scenario and give our new scenario a name. I'm just going to call it Start Chip Feed. A description can be supplied, but we don't need to in this case, and we're also going to assign it to the digester area. Now we can see that this scenario has been added to our list of scenarios in this left-hand pane here, and we select it and we give it an initial snapshot. In this case, I want the startup state, which will correspond to the plant largely being in a shutdown state. We don't need a time limit in this case. You'll see we have several panes on this screen, this one for the goals that we wish to define, and then we also have a pane for conditions and also malfunctions. Conditions are a variant of goals that we won't use here, and malfunctions allow us to cause a piece of equipment to fail to simulate that this piece of equipment has actually broken in the field. Now we're going to actually assign our goals, so we do this from the operational screens. We're going to give the operator two goals. First, the operator needs to start the chip pile reclaim feeders here. Because of interlocks, such as this one here, the operator will need to start the entire train of material handling equipment down to the chip bin in order to start the feeder. Second, we want to see a flow of at least 200 tons per hour to the chip bin measured here. In order to add the goal, we open the motor pop-up, switch the scenario setup page, select the scenario that we want to add to, which we select our start chip feed scenario, and just click the add to selected scenario here and after a few seconds we see that our goal has shown up in the list here. Now we're going to do the same for the analog tag for the flow of chips and we select start chip feed and in this case we actually have to add a range of the values that we wish to see because it's an analog value rather than a discrete one. So each of these requires a minimum, we want 200 tons per hour and we're going to give it just a maximum that is outside its engineering range and we hit add to selected scenario here. You'll also notice that this has been sorted into a list so that it actually gives the goals an order in which they are listed as the scenario actually progresses. If we go back to the scenario management page and select the scenario we just created, you can see here that the two goals that we created have been added to this particular scenario. Now let's also add this scenario to one of the courses. Courses allow us to group scenarios in order to track operator progress against slightly broader objectives. So we are going to add this to the Cooking one course, and we then find our course in the available scenarios, and it is right here. And click this button, and we can see that it's now been added to that course. Now we can go ahead and test the scenario that we just created. We do this by going to the simulation control page for the cooking area, finding our new scenario, and checking the start with scenario button, and pushing the play button here. The splash screen appears while we wait for the simulation to load. Once the simulation is loaded, it starts up in the pause state, and we can see a list of goals for the active scenario here. So now we can start execution with the resume button here, and we can go back and actually start equipment. All of the equipment on this page is actually dependent upon the airlock, which is over on the chip bin. So our first order of business is to start the airlock here. With this running, we can now go back to the chip pile screen and start our material handling in reverse order.
Now that our two feeders have started, we can actually go back to the simulation control page, and you can see here that one of our two goals has been achieved. So this just leaves us with actually getting our tonnage up to the targeted point. In order to do this, we have to go back here and increase the speed of our feeders, which are currently sitting in manual at 0%. So we go to the control tab, and we'll just increase this all the way to 100%. You can see the tonnage start to come up here, and it's coming up slowly because the model does accurately reflect the material transport delays in this whole process. So since we don't want to wait too long, I'm just going to put the model into fast forward mode to accelerate the passage of time. If you look here, you can see that the number of seconds is now progressing roughly 10 times real time. We're now starting to get tonnage here, and it's actually coming up fairly rapidly, and you'll see that be reflected in the trend here once the tons come up to our targeted point. Now that our tonnage here has exceeded the 200 tons an hour that we set, you'll notice that our scenario status has changed to pass here. So I'll just take this back to real time. And at this point, we can go back to the simulation control page and stop the simulation and save our result. As you can see here, all of our goals are achieved. So just going to shut down simulation. And this will just take a few seconds. And you can see now that the model state has transitioned to stopped. Now that the simulation is stopped, we can view our result from the My Training page under the Instructor tab. You can see under the history that this is our result here and that we passed. We've now also completed 20% of the Cooking 1 course. And if we go down to the course detail, we can see right here that we have completed this particular scenario. You can also see that there was one prior attempt that I made before shooting this video where I did not actually complete it, so you can see both our number of attempts and the number of times that we've succeeded at this particular scenario. This brings us to the end of the scenario's demonstration. For more information about the training system, please take a look at our other videos.